Hey everybody, it's low carb and keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger bringing you the one and only Keto Without the Crazy. It is so good to see you, even though I can't really see you, but I know you can see me. I have been gone for way too long. And sometime coming up, I'll do a video about why I was gone, but the long story short, it was just an unplanned hiatus. No, nothing's wrong, there was no problem, I'm okay. It was just an unplanned little break. And to those of you that reached out, that contacted me to see if I was okay, when I was gonna be back, I am so touched, truly. It absolutely warms my heart that anyone missed me, that you wanted to make sure I was okay. So to those of you that reached out and said hello, thank you. And to anyone who is new to my channel, hello, welcome aboard. And uh, I also very much appreciate anyone who's been watching my older videos in the meantime and leaving comments. I do still check in and I reply to comments. So thank you so much. Since I've been gone a while, let me just have a couple of announcements here, some business items before we get into today's topic. So I just wanna let you know, I'm going to be sharing some more affiliate products and items and links going forward. I've always had links in the notes to my videos, but I just want to promote them a little more now. Um, I really like to support other people that I trust, that I like, that I believe in. And I want to reassure you that anything I ever share, any item, any product that I tell you about, it's something that I use myself, or if I don't use it, I have tested it and I like it. And maybe the only reason I don't use it myself is because I personally don't need it, but I'm happy to share it with you because maybe you do, or maybe you know someone who does. So just to reiterate, any product that I ever share with you is something that I have used. I like it. I trust it. In most cases, I even know the people who make the product, who manufacture or created it. So check out the links. In future videos, I will go into specific detail, but I've got links to Element down in the notes, um, People's Choice Beef Jerky, which has a number of very yummy zero sugar beef jerky, which is not easy to find. But for today, let's promote the best stuff. Would you like to snag yourself one of these super cool Keto Without the Crazy shirts? We've got long sleeve t-shirts. I've got big, very, very warm, very comfy sweatshirts. We've got um, tote bags, you know, for going to the farmer's market or the library. And, you know, it's not Amy. It's not Keto Without the Crazy. Without a you-know-what. A coffee mug. Or a tea mug, if you so wish. If you're not a coffee drinker, we can still be friends. Uh, you can put your bone broth in here. I'm not a real broth person, but if you are, anyway, there is a link to the merch store, the Keto Without the Crazy merch store down in the notes. Do check it out. All of this stuff is available in various colors. If you don't like a black mug, don't get a black mug. Don't like a blue shirt, choose a different color. Anyway, other business items before I get into things. Many of you know, I am the lead nutritionist and head writer basically at Adapt Your Life Academy, where I help to create online courses about keto and other uh, health and nutrition topics mostly related to keto with the one and only Dr. Eric Westman, a keto legend, keto OG royalty. And we have some very exciting stuff coming up. Links in the notes with everything else, adaptyourlifeacademy.com. We have a course about reversing type two diabetes and pre-diabetes. It opens April 29th, but you can see all the details now. You can get on the wait list now. Getting on the wait list means that we will notify you as soon as enrollment opens on April 29th. And Dr. Westman will also be doing a live workshop about type two diabetes and pre-diabetes the evening of April 29th, or evening if you're in my time zone, it'll be 8 p.m. Eastern time, April 29th. Anyway, all of the details will be in the links below if you have any interest in learning more about type two diabetes or prediabetes and how you don't have to have it, how you can completely reverse it, how you can have totally normal blood sugars forever, 
basically and reduce your medication like use less medication possibly no medication and have better blood sugar then you definitely want to check out that course and i did a lot of work behind the scenes to get that course created um to do a lot of the content a lot of the written material is courtesy of yours truly so i really think that that course can be very helpful for you or anyone you know or care about or love who has type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes but doesn't want to have type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes anymore the course is literally called reverse type 2 diabetes and it's also suitable for pre-diabetes so we just have a lot of cool stuff going on there the course that i did all about breaking fat loss stalls on low carbon keto diets is available now we used to do a launch just a few times a year like oh doors are open get in now for my stall course you can take it now so just links below amy stop talking you're six minutes in let's get to the topic I just wanted to bring you up to speed because it has been too long. It's been too long. So it's kind of a touchy subject that I have to talk about tonight. Or well, I say tonight because I'm recording this in the evening. Many of us have come to understand that if we have a difficult time sticking to keto, or low carb or carnivore or whatever flavor of lower carbohydrate eating you want to do we sometimes have a hard time sticking to it because we are using food to numb out to zone out to distract ourselves or just to soothe right emotional eating or to smooth over painful and difficult and uncomfortable emotions and we could i'm not going to get into the science of the, the dopamine the serotonin like whatever that's not that that's irrelevant but let's stay on point here amy see i'm out of practice doing videos i think a lot of us have come to acknowledge that like i am an emotional eater or i do use food to soothe to numb out to distract myself at the end of a long day something that I don't think I've ever talked about in this way. I, I may have mentioned it in videos a long, long time ago. It's been a long time since I've brought this up at all. Is those of us who might be using food almost as a convenient excuse to not deal with larger problems in our lives and i'll give you an example from my own life and maybe some of you will be able to relate and i only recently realized this like this this is a problem i had kind of in the past and i've, I've only really recently come to acknowledge that this is what i think was happening and i wasn't i wasn't eating high carbs but i was massively overeating low carb foods i mean let's face it you can overeat anything including steak including broccoli including chicken these people say oh nobody binges on steak do you want to bet that is neither here nor there there was a time several years back when i really really hated my work and this this is actually before I was even a keto nutritionist, like before I did this professionally, but I was already eating keto just for myself in my own life. And I was basically binging almost every night on pork rinds and on other, other low carb foods, but inhaling massive quantities of food. And I hated my job at the time. I hated my life. I didn't have, I, I, I was living in a place where I was relatively isolated. I didn't have a lot of friends. I had hardly any social life. I spent like 95% of my time alone. And looking back, I think I was using food as not a scapegoat, but I was subconsciously making food a bigger problem than all of that other stuff because then 
I didn't have to get a new job. I didn't have to try to make friends. I didn't need to move to a new town and meet new people because, oh, that's not the problem. Uh, the problem is I'm overweight. The problem is I'm a binge eater. I can't, I don't have to work on those really large, really scary life issues because I've got to figure out my food crap first. I've got to fix this binge eating. I've got to fix my food stuff before I can tackle that. Do you get, do you get what I'm saying? It's, I was using food and I, this is my estimation, right? Is this what I was doing? I don't know, but only I can say, right? Looking back on the situation, this is my interpretation of it now. I was making food the bigger problem in my life, making food, my weight, a bigger problem and choosing to prioritize that so that I didn't have to do the really hard, really scary work on the rest of my life. And some of you might be in this situation. Maybe it has to do with your job. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you have realized, oh my goodness. I don't love my spouse anymore. I don't, I don't, I've been married to this guy for 29 years and I have not liked him for the last 10 of those, or I've been married to this woman and I, oh my gosh, I think I need out of this marriage. It is so much easier to focus on losing weight or to focus on following a ketogenic diet than it is to explore what you might have to do to end a 20 or 30 year marriage or maybe to get a new job maybe maybe you maybe you've been doing a certain job a certain career for 10 20 30 years and maybe you're great at it maybe you're really successful but you're miserable you hate it maybe you're making lots and lots of money but that is not enough to make up for the fact that every Sunday night you get what we all call the Sunday scaries because oh God, tomorrow's Monday. Oh my God, I've got this thing. I've got this whole week. I, I can't believe I have to go back to that office. Like I'm going to, I'm going to strangle myself. I can't spend one more day going to that office, looking at that boss, looking at that cubicle. I've been there again. It's sometimes easier to say, you know, yes, I hate my job. I'm miserable. I'm I, every day is worse and worse. I don't know how much longer I can take it, but I have to lose weight. I got to figure out this binging. I have to get control of my food. Let me, let me do that first. Let me get a handle on this food and then I can tackle everything else or whatever. Right. It could be a job. It could be a relationship. It could be moving. You know, let's say, I hate it here. I hate it here, but my whole family's here, our furniture's, what am I going to do? I hate this town. I've hated it for 17 years or 17 months, 17 weeks. I'm miserable, but it's so hard and so scary and so painful and so expensive to deal with whatever that may be that subconsciously or unconsciously, whatever the right word is, I'm going to make food a bigger problem for myself. I'm going to let myself be out of control with food so that I don't have to work on these larger problems. I have to choose to, you know, whatever, figure out the food first. I don't know if that resonates with any of you watching, but I think it explains a lot of my previous history of being out of control with certain foods. Um, it's just interesting and it's not, it's not easy to admit that. And maybe I'm way off base. Maybe I'm off the mark and everybody watching this is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're this is keto with the crazy. Cause Amy has done lost her mind. No, <laughs> I just, it is easier. So if you struggle with keto, as difficult as it can be to stick to keto and to stay on plan and to lose the weight and 
improve your health in whatever other ways you may be working on. As difficult as that might be, it's not as difficult as looking your spouse in the eye and saying, I don't love you anymore and I want a divorce. Or walking into your boss's office and giving your two weeks notice. Do you see what I mean? That we may be, and I, I say subconsciously, because we're not aware that that's what we're doing. This is very underlying deep stuff. None of us, none of us, you know, at midnight reach for a box of cookies thinking, well, I hate my job, but I'm too scared to quit. Therefore, I'm going to binge on cookies instead so that my weight will be the larger issue. And then I don't have to worry about dealing with the job. None of us is doing that with that deliberate intent. But I just, I think that may be going on for some of us. Not all of us, certainly. Some of us, it's not that deep. Some of us just like sugar. Some of us just like starchy foods and we overeat them and we have a hard time staying away and there's nothing else deeper going on in our lives. But for some of us, there is. And I just wanted to bring that up in case it does hit home for somebody watching, in case it does resonate. I want you to know that you're not alone and there was something else I wanted you to know. What was it? That this, this is a real thing, you know, maybe this does apply to you. And if it does apply, then you need to go a little deeper on those other issues and maybe get some other kind of help to tackle those. You know, even if you fix your food stuff, let's say, okay, you know, I can't, I can't get a divorce or I can't move or I can't get a new job. I can't do X and Y until I figure food out. Well, let's say you do figure the food out. Well, well now what? Now we've, we've still got this big steaming pile of scary <laughs> waiting for us. So it's, it's, it's a false, it's a, it's an incorrect thought. It's not a helpful thought to think that, oh, let me just lose weight first. Let me just get on top of my food first. Because, okay, then what? Now I fixed the food. Now I, right? And I was using the food as a way to escape this big other thing. Now I don't have the food to escape to or distract me from that big thing. Now I still have to deal with the big thing. So yeah, you're, you're not alone. I don't think this is unusual. I think it's probably pretty common actually. And we just don't realize we're not aware. It's such a long standing pattern to be in that we don't even realize that this is our pattern. And again, it, it may not apply to you at all, but I'm pretty sure that there's at least a few people out there watching who are thinking, oh my goodness, boy, did that touch a nerve. And maybe you're not feeling that way right now, but later today or tomorrow or sometime next week, you're going to remember, oh, Amy, this is going to come back to you. If this is your situation, this is going to come back to you. You are going to remember and you're going to realize that this is what might be going on for you. And I don't have any magical solutions, except like I said, you you may want to pursue some outside help with those other issues, but I just want you to know that I don't think there's anything wrong with you. If this is what you are doing, you're not broken. You're not crazy. You're not weird. This to me seems like a very human reaction, a very human, natural way of handling things. What do we do when something is big and scary? We don't want to deal with it. What can I do to get away from this? Oh, I'll put on 20 pounds. So that way I can't deal with my life until I lose weight. It's easier to focus on food. It's easier to put all your mental effort toward that than it is to 
tackle the really problematic stuff. All right, I'm going to stop talking. I think that's enough. I just really, I just wanted to broach that topic because I don't, I don't really hear anyone else talking about that in that way. And I think it's important. Again, I, I don't have the magical answers, but as with any of this type of stuff, the first thing is to realize that that is what's going on. You can't fix it if you don't know what the problem is. You can't fix it if you don't understand what's happening. So just to, to realize, oh my gosh, this is what I've been doing. Holy cow. Okay, now what? How am I going to navigate this instead of making keto my number one life priority and making weight loss my number one life priority when maybe there's something that should be more than that? And again, I don't, I think this is a very normal, natural human tendency to do. So don't, don't beat yourself up over it. Acknowledge it and empower yourself. Oh, now that I know that this is what I'm doing, what am I going to do about it? What a helpful, empowering, informative realization this can be. All right, 21 and a half minutes. We're done for now. I hope to see you again soon. I intend to get back to making videos regularly and I am available for consultations. There's always a link in the notes if you would like uh, personalized help with your keto or low carb diet and do check out the reversing type two diabetes course from Adapter Life Academy. Uh, Dr. Westman is going to do some live sessions for the course. The course is recorded video lessons, pre-recorded that you go through at your own pace, but we also do some live sessions for review and Q and A. Dr. Westman's doing three, I'm doing two. I will be part of the reverse type two diabetes course myself. And we have a whole ton of other courses available. Just look in all these good, sweet little juicy links I will have for you in the notes. Check out the affiliates. And like I said, I'm going to be promoting a little bit more heavily in the future. And um, I hope that's okay. Any product I share with you is something that I am comfortable and confident sharing with you. Until next time, keep the crazy out of your keto. Thank you for watching.